Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about vitamin B3 enzymology, specifically NAD and NADP. The difference between them is just one group of phosphate. With that being said, now let's get started. Let me answer the question of the previous video. Why would long-term use of isoniazid INH, that's an anti-tuberculosis drug, cause pellagra? Here is the answer, sunshine. You know tryptophan, yep, tryptophan can become niacin, but for, in order for you to do this, you need NADPH. Where did NADPH come from? It came from vitamin B6. So that's why isoniazid, long-term use, can lead to vitamin B6 deficiency, especially if your doctor is a doofus and did not provide you with vitamin B6 supplements. So you will suffer from vitamin B6 deficiency and therefore you'll have decreased amount of NADPH and therefore you will not be able to convert the tryptophan to niacin. Deficiency of niacin is also known as pellagra. 3Ds, diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia. So even before we start this video, you have one function of NADPH. What's the function of NADPH? To convert kinurinine into niacin. As you know, niacin is a vitamin, therefore it's a cofactor for enzymes and it aids in metabolism and antioxidant, specifically the NADPH, as we will discover later. Niacin is a water-soluble vitamin. The following are synonyms, B3, niacin, nicotinic acid, and nicotinamide. Niacin has two different functions. It's a freaking vitamin. It's also a lipid-lowering drug. One function has nothing to do with the other because the dose is different. It's like aspirin. Aspirin is antiplatelet. It's also anti-inflammatory, but the dose is different. Low-dose aspirin is antiplatelet. High-dose aspirin is anti-inflammatory. Nicotinamide is only a vitamin. Nicotinamide is not an antihyperlipidemic drug. Therefore, nicotinamide cannot cause flushing. To know more about niacin, the lipid-lowering agent, check out my video called Niacin Mnemonic. It's not just the mnemonic, it's an explanation and mnemonic. To learn about all of the anti-hyperlipidemics, anti-hypertensives, anti-arrhythmics, anti-CHF, etc., go to medicosisperfectionalis.com, get my cardiac pharmacology course. Use the promo code CARDIOFARM50 to get a 50% discount, available for 8 students only until the end of the month. Niacin baby is important for redox reaction, reduction oxidation reactions. We call these enzymes oxyreductases. Vitamin B3 has many benefits, including treatment of pellagra and treatment of hyperlipidemia. Also, redox reaction by NAD plus and NADP. These are the oxidized forms. How about the reduced forms? You add an H, so it becomes NADH and NADPH. Those two are called reduced forms. Back to oxidized forms, they are helpful for DNA repair, redox reactions. Specifically, let's be specific here, NAD plus will help you with the catabolic reactions, such as glycolysis. NADP plus will help you with the anabolic. Of course, I remember it how these are three letters, these are four letters. When you have more letters, you are building up stuff. But when you have fewer letters, you are destroying stuff. We have talked about the sources of vitamin B3 in the previous video. Niacin nicotinamide tryptophan enters into the mitochondria, hashtag cellular level. You end up with NAD and NADP. How do you get from an NAD to NADP by a freaking kinase? Because kinase is an enzyme that adds phosphate group. Niacin absorption, you eat a source of niacin and then NAD and NADP end up in your small intestine and then they get absorbed as nicotinamide and nicotinic acid. They enter into the portal circulation and into your liver. Here is nicotinamide and here is nicotinic acid. Tryptophan can help us. And then you'll end up with NAD and NADP. So you ate NAD and NADP and you ended up with NAD and NADP, but you had to get these intermediate compounds, nicotinamide and nicotinic acid. These two heroes will help us with redox reactions. From NAD to NADP, you need a freaking kinase. This is called NAD plus kinase. This is phosphorylation. NAD and NADP are cofactors for many dehydrogenase enzymes. They are electron carriers. Also, NAD and NADP are important for DNA repair and cell signaling. They are important also in metabolism. 
This NAD is important for catabolism, such as glycolysis. NADP is for anabolism, such as synthesis of fatty acid and cholesterol. Of course, cholesterol synthesis include HDL, and this is the function of niacin as a lipid-lowering agent. It helps you raise the HDL. And it increases synthesis of fatty acid. When you increase synthesis of fatty acid, by definition, you're decreasing uh, the destruction of the adipose tissue. When you decrease the adipose breakdown, this is the mechanism of action of niacin as a lipid-lowering agent. It inhibits the hormone-sensitive lipase. I've told you before that niacin as a lipid-lowering agent will increase an H and decrease another H. Which one is this one? This is the HDL. We increase HDL. Which one is this one? The hormone-sensitive lipase. We inhibit it. Okay, great. So they are important for metabolism. Okay, what do you mean? I mean like uh, building up stuff and breaking down stuff. Great. So... A metabolically active tissue is most affected by niacin deficiency. Yeah, that's true. The more metabolically active you are, the more affected you're going to be. What do you mean by metabolically active? Could be increased energy requirements, such as your beautiful brain, or increased cell turnover, such as your lovely GI and your cute skin. So GI skin and brain will be most affected in niacin deficiency? Yes, that's right. And that's why the symptoms of pellagra are diarrhea, dermatitis, and freaking dementia. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Before we talk about oxidation and reduction, we need to understand what oxidation is. Oxidation is one of three things. It's either gaining of an oxygen, that's why we call it oxidation, or losing a hydrogen, or losing an electron, because an electron is a negative thing. When you lose a negative, you are positive. That's a good thing. It's oxidation. Reduction is the exact opposite. You lose an oxygen, that's why it's a reduction, or you gain a hydrogen, or you gain a negative electron. Any of these are called reduction, any of these are called oxidation. If you have finished any chemistry class and you do not know this, there is no hope for you. So here is the deal, NAD plus and NADP plus, these are oxidized or reduced, they are oxidized. Why? Because they have positive, they do not have negative. Oh, so they, ha they got rid of the electron, absolutely. Since they got rid of the electron, they can accept the electron back. Yep, that's why we call them electron acceptors. They are positive, and as you know, positives attract negative. So positive will attract the negative, we get it. So when they accept an electron and the electron is negative, they will lose their positive charge and then they will become NADH and NADPH. Reduction is what? Gaining of an electron. This is exactly what happened. This is the reduced form. This is the inactive form. So these two are reduced and therefore they are reducing agents. What do you mean? They will reduce other molecules. What do you mean? They will give their electrons, they're negative, to other molecules and now these other molecules will become reduced because now they are stuck with the negative electron. But I always forget which one is oxidized and which one is reduced. Look at the hydrogen. Remember that reduction is gaining a hydrogen. The ones that have hydrogen are definitely the reduced one. The ones that have the positives are definitely the oxidized one. They are not reduced. They do not have an electron. Great. Since now they are reduced and in active form, can they donate the negative that is hidden here? Yeah, of course they can donate it. Yeah, how do you donate it? You donate it and when you donate it, you become NAD plus and NADP plus. The mnemonic is you donate to the Red Cross. When they donate the electron, they become positive. These are now the oxidized forms because remember oxidation is losing an electron. Just to let you know, tryptophan or aspartic acid can become NAD. So what are the enzymes that require NADP? And what are the enzymes that require NAD as a cofactor? So first, NADP. G6PD glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. By the way, this is the most common enzyme deficiency on the face of the earth. Please don't ever forget that. The next enzyme is the enzyme that converted kinurinine into niacin. Remember when we started with tryptophan, and then from tryptophan we became kin whatever, and then it became niacin. The enzyme here required two things. It required vitamin B2, and it required vitamin B6. Why do you need vitamin B2? To give me the FAD. 
And why did you need vitamin B6, baby, to give you the NADPH? Does anyone remember that? Yes. What are the enzymes that require NAD as a cofactor? A lot. Glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase, a famous enzyme in glycolysis. Pyruvate dehydrogenase, another enzyme in glycolysis. Alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, a famous enzyme in Krebs cycle. Branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogen, this is amino acid metabolism. And don't forget that these three enzymes require not just NAD, but five freaking cofactor. Remember Teflon company? Thiamine, FAD, NAD, lipoic acid, and COASH. Malate dehydrogenase also requires NAD. Other functions other than reduction oxidation, these ugly enzymes. They're actually beautiful, but I cannot memorize them ever. Listen to me, people. When you go to McDonald's and order a cheeseburger, the cheeseburger has three parts. Number one, the bread, also known as the bun. This is carbohydrate. And then you have the cheese. This is freaking fat. And then you have the patty, the meat, the protein. Whether you eat carbohydrate, proteins, or lipid, they will end up at acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA will enter into the TCA cycle, also known as tricarboxylic acid cycle, also known as citric acid cycle, also known as Krebs cycle. And in the TCA cycle, you'll convert NAD into NADH, why do you want the H? I want the H to enter into the electron transport chain inside the freaking mitochondria. And this H will help convert the ADP into ATP thanks to the phenomenon of proton pumping. Whenever you see NAD or NADH, you can thank niacin B3, baby. So, other functions other than reduction oxidation, bacterial DNA ligase, ATP ribosyl transferase, this is post-translational modification, poly ADP ribose polymerase, this is for DNA repair, cyclic ADP ribose for cell signaling, especially for the calcium, Rionid rionidine receptor, the famous receptor in physiology, and deacetylase, this is transcription. If you are just a student who is getting started, you do not need to memorize all of this. But if you are preparing a PhD for biochemistry, God help you, absolutely you need to memorize all of them. We have discussed the glorious process of glycolysis before glucose into pyruvate. Pyruvate has many, many pathways to go to. The normal pathway is to acetyl-CoA. But if you do not have oxygen or if something else happened, this pyruvate can become lactate. And it can also become oxaloacetate. It can also become alanine. So forget all of these. Let's focus on glycolysis. Now it's clear. Glucose, pyruvate, acetyl-CoA. TCA cycle, ATP, money, that's great. By the way, from here to here, especially at the step of the GAP dehydrogenase or the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, you secreted 2-NADH, you produced 2-NADH. And then from pyruvate to SLOK, you produce another 2-NADH. In the TCA cycle, you produce 6-NADH and 2-FADH2. All of them, baby, we need all of these etches to enter into the ETC cycle to produce energy. Hashtag proton pumping. Quick note, the pyruvate dehydrogenase is one of the three enzymes that requires five cofactors, thiamine, FAD, and ADH. Thank you, niacin, lipoic acid, and coash. After glycolysis, you enter into the TCA cycle, acetyl-CoA, then citrate, isocitrate, alpha-ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, succinate, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate, and back to acetyl-CoA. This was profound. Okay, from isocitrate to alpha-ketoglutarate, we need isocitrate dehydrogenase, thanks to NAD, and then it's going to be converted into NADH. Then alpha ketoglutarate into succinyl CoA is NAD also to NADH. Alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase is one of the three enzymes that requires five cofactors. This is B1, this is B2, this is B3. Next, succinyl CoA, succinate. From succinate to fumarate, succinate dehydrogenase, we have talked about this before, produces FADH2. And then malate and then oxaloacetate. This is malate dehydrogenase, NAD to NADH. There are three enzymes that produce NADH, and there is only one enzyme that produced FADH2. All of them will enter into the electron transport chain because we need all of these protons to produce energy. Hashtag proton pumping. The only difference between NADH and FADH2 is that the former will give us three ATPs, but the latter will give us only two ATPs. FAD is freaking late. It's late, it's only two. It didn't come early to catch the three ATPs. 
This is your famous electron transport chain. Remember that FADH is freaking late? Yep, it produces only two ATP. It did not come as early as the NADH. Look at this, it's very early, it's in complex one. So NADH is early, that's why it's gonna be rewarded by three ATPs. But FAD is freaking late, it's only gonna give you two ATPs. Okay, medicosis, we get it. But what the flip is proton pumping that you, hashtag proton pumping, what the flip is this? Okay, complex one pumps electron to the outside like this. And then another complex pumps proton to the outside like this. And then pumps, and then it's the, the protons accumulate outside and they get sick and tired of being sick and tired. When you have tons of positives outside, it's called repulsion. They will repel each other. Boom, they enter to the inside. ADP plus P, I'll give you ATP. Please don't forget the three enzymes that require five cofactors, and here is the mnemonic. So we have talked about glycerol dehyde three phosphate dehydrogenase as part of glycolysis, converting glucose into pyruvate, but this one converts glycerol dehyde three phosphate into one and three whatever. Pyruvate dehydrogenase alpha ketoglutarate branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase, these require the five cofactors. Malate dehydrogenase was part of the TCA cycle, if you remember. Other functions, you don't have to memorize them. Now we know everything about NAD, let's talk about NADP. First function, G6PD. Second function, converting tryptophan to niacin by passing through this intermediate compound that I hate. Where do you get NADPH from? Okay, first you get it from NADP. Where did you get the NADP from? I got it from the NAD. Where did you get the NAD from? I got it from my diet because I ate stuff that contained vitamin B3, such as yeast, fish, meat, vegetables, etc., etc., and so on and so forth. And then NAD becomes NADP+. You can thank the NADP plus kinase that gave us the P. And then it's going to be converted into NADPH thanks to a glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, which will convert a glucose 6-phosphate, which was taken from within the process of glycolysis, and it's going to convert it into 6-phosphogluconate. And then, after going this way, we'll come back and go this way and continue glycolysis. That's why we call it a freaking shunt, because we shunted the path here and then back to here. It's the hexose monophosphate shunt, also known as the pentose shunt. What is the purpose of the shunt? Many things, including the production of NADPH. Why do we even care? The first reason why we care is that this is important to convert tryptophan to niacin. The second reason why you should care is because the NADPH will help the glutathione reductase. Why do I even care? Because the glutathione reductase will reduce the glutathione into the reduced form of glutathione. This was oxidized, but this is reduced. Remember when you have an H, you are reduced? Yeah, because gaining a hydrogen is a process of reduction. Why do I need a reduced glutathione? Oh. Do not ask this question again, it makes me angry. Because this is very crucial to protect your red blood cells from the nasty reactive oxygen species such as H2O2 hydrogen peroxide or dihydrogen dioxide as the amateurs used to say. And then it takes this nasty destructive H2O2 and convert it into harmless water. This is how you save your red blood cells from destruction. And that's why people who lack this enzyme, people who have G6PD deficiency, they cannot produce glutathione reductase and they cannot activate their glutathione peroxidase and therefore they cannot convert the harmful hydrogen peroxide into the harmless water. And that's why they suffer from destruction of the red blood cells. Hashtag hemolysis. Medicine makes perfect sense with medicosis perfectionals. So what's the function of NADPH? Lots of function include to activate your glutathione reductase, which will save and protect your red blood cells from H2O2, the reactive oxygen species, and also to convert oxygen into superoxide. And this is very useful if you want to destroy bacteria. And then NADH, which is very similar to NADPH, it's just one phosphate less, hashtag phosphatase. And then you get to activate your methemoglobin reductase, which will reduce your methemoglobin into the normal hemoglobin. 
from Ferrec into Ferras. Is this considered to be a reduction? Oh yeah, look at this. This is three plus and this is two plus. You have less positives. This is called reduction. When you are increasing your positives, it's called oxidation. When you're decreasing your positives, it's called reduction. And that's why normal people do not suffer from methemoglobinemia, although they have a trace amount of methemoglobin. If you want to protect your red blood cells from reactive oxygen species, NADPH will help. If you want to destroy the nasty bacteria, NADPH will also help. Converting oxygen into superoxide and then superoxide into hydrogen peroxide thanks to superoxide dismutase. And then converting this to hypochlorite, which is bleach. And then you throw the bleach on the bacteria. Stomatitis can be seen with vitamin B2 deficiency or vitamin B3 deficiency. And now you understand why vitamin B3 deficiency affects the GI, the skin, and the brain. Don't forget that vitamin B6 is important and NADPH is important if you want to have niacin. Heart nub disease is autosomal recessive and it can lead to pellagra. Don't forget the most common cause of thiamine deficiency and the most common cause of niacin deficiency. Get my antibiotics course to learn about antibacterials, antifungals, antivirals, and antiparasitic medications at medicosisperfectionalist.com. In the next video, we'll talk about pellagra. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. Support me here or here. You can send my email here. Get my premium courses here. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionist, where medicine makes perfect sense.